and your is a cell and your heart begins to fail. Don't forget that God in heaven as his prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Verse 4. When your youthful days are gone and old age is stilling on and your body bends beneath the weight of care, he will never leave you then. He'll go with you to the end. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Last time, leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Amen. Let's do exactly that. If we trust and never doubt, you will surely bring us out. So we bring our burdens and help us leave them there. God, our Father, thank you for this another day. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for opening hearts and minds. Thank you for allowing us to submit our wills to your will. Thank you for the privilege of speaking in your name. Pray, Lord, that you would now use us for your glory. My prayer, Father, is that you would take me out of self. Be none opinionated, none deliberate. Non judgmental. But Holy Spirit, help me to say those things that you've placed on my heart. Help us to see Jesus through your word. You're able, oh God, to use anyone or anything you please. Thank you for letting me trust you. Thank you for growing me and loving me, teaching me your love. That's why I can say I love you back because you so love me. That's your word now. Have thine own way. And the awesome name of your son. I stand it. Amen. Good morning. And praise the Lord. Thanks be unto God, my Father, my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and our helper, the Holy Spirit. For this day. Giving honor to Pastor 
Molan, to my brothers in the ministry, including those who are absent and are in our prayers, particularly Brother Gatson, but all the others as well. To you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it's just good to be here. Truly, it's good. God has selected for us to remain in this world one more day. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow may not ever get here. But as I said on last week, now faith hmm, is the substance of things hopeful. So what we have is right now. That's all we have. We have right now to give God some praise. We have right now. You forget about last night. I know you had fun. That was good. I know you have plans for tomorrow, may not ever get there, but what he has afforded us is right now. So right now, why don't you just tell the Lord, thank you. Now I know greater peace, we're unconventional, but and we're, we're not used, we're not like others, but, but right now, why don't we just give God a, 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 a clap and hand praise. Come on now, you can do better than that, because he, he deserves it. We clap and praise for any and everything else of non-significance, really, when it all boils down. But when it comes to praising the Lord, we want to sit on a note. Let's give God a cane clap of praise, because he is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of your praise this morning. He woke you up. I see some of you. That's on, that's on you. But he woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Kept you all week long. I'm going to have to calm down, Brother Gil. But listen, he kept you all week long. Kept you from danger seen and unseen. Kept you alive. Healed you. Made you come back to this place today. And we ought to be thankful. I'm not saying that you're not. I'm just saying what I'm saying. We ought to give him some praise. As I said last week, listen, if we can't praise God together, if the saints can't praise God among one another, then who's going to do it? I don't know about you, but I don't want no rock to cry out for me. I'm going to learn to praise the Lord while I have a chance. And let me get ahead of myself and just go ahead and tell you before I give you my text that you don't know. Wish I had somebody up in here this morning. Like I know. Somebody know where I'm going. I see you shaking your head. What the Lord has done for me. So don't smother my praise. Don't cover up my praise. Don't dismiss my praise because you don't know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know like I know. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of what he has done for me. He's been good. I said he's been good, and he's still good. I thank you for your prayers. Thank you for praying for my wife. Please continue to pray for her. We're still in that valley experience. We don't know what's coming, but we're trusting in the Lord. We're walking through that valley. We ain't rushing. We ain't running. We're walking through that valley. 
And I have come to the point where I believe that the valley experiences are, des are designed or divine valleys from God to take us to another level in him. Can I get a witness? So thank you for your prayers for, and also for Marcus. His mom said, well, the doctor said it was a miracle that when he got to the emergency room, the first emergency room said it was a miracle that he was able to sit there and talk with him, that he shouldn't be alive according to what his issue was. And after they rushed him to the emergency surgery that he had to have, amen, it was successful. And I thank you for that already. But now the word yesterday was that they were trying to let him go home because every test that they had taken, see, scripture says somewhere that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And they taken tests. Now this, this young man has had about 24 years old, has had major surgery. But they had to cut out the main artery of his heart and graft it back together. His body was going to have to accept that. So every test since then that they've taken have come out negative. And his mom said the doctors are scratching their heads. And then the last thing she said in the text, she says, but God. But God. So keep on praying. Amen. We thank God. Now, I've been trying for, for longer than two weeks. I knew my time was coming at the end of November to stand before you. The Lord said the same, and he has said so. And I have been trying my best to bring some of the studies that I have been doing out of the book of Ephesians for so long now, but the Lord just has not allowed me to bring that subject to you. I think you're going to get it in the future, though, from the man himself. But God has not allowed me to touch it. I sure want to touch it. Out of Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 7 through 10, I sure want to share with you what God has shared with me about our redemption. Saints, what a wonderful God we serve. God has done an awesome thing for his children. My prayer is that we would learn those things that he has done for us truly. I tell you, it will change your Christian life. It will grow you in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I tell you, it will cause you to want more of Jesus. I don't know about you this morning, but I want more. I said, I want, I want more of Jesus. Don't give me riches. You can give it to me if you want, I'll accept it. But don't give me riches and gold. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I said before, I may not be able to leave my children the things of this world, but in all of my doing, in all of my giving, it, and trying to be the best dad that I, I could have been, listen, I tried to give them Jesus. I've tried to leave them Jesus. Because I know what they're going to need in times to come. <laughs> yeah, they're going to need Jesus. You can look out today, not very far from the parking lot, and you can, you can see that the world today still need Jesus. The Old Testament Jesus is, is called the Prince, help me, Holy Ghost, of peace. Boy, we sure do need some of that peace today. They need that peace over in the Middle East today. Can I get a witness? 
They need that peace over in Ukraine and Russia today. Amen, somebody. They need that peace over in Africa today. Over in China and Indonesia and all of those other places, even down under in Australia, they need the peace of God today. And I know that's a little far for some of you, so I'll bring it home in your house. I wish I had somebody. I feel like praising the Lord. In your house, you need peace. In this house, help me somebody, we still need the peace of God. You call yourselves, we call ourselves greater peace. Greater peace than there's no greater love than this. Than a man lay down his life for his friend. We all know that Jesus laid down his life for us. Jesus says, you call me your friend, and indeed I am. He is a friend of mine. He said, but if I'm your friend, if I'm your master, from your Lord, do what I tell you to do. Uh, okay, I didn't get a lot on that one, but that's all right. I'll say it again. He said, yeah, if you love me, keep. Somebody say keep. Keep, keep my words. Keep my commandments. Do what I tell you to do. Follow me. Seek my face. Learn, Magruda, of me. And every day, God, sin, you're going to find out something new about Jesus. Don't be satisfied with what you know already. Don't just sit on what you already got. No, give that away and learn something new about your Savior. Learn something new. Let him become a, a I am in your life. I am a, a mind regulator. Somebody this morning said, I am a healer. I am a doctor in your sick room. I will unconfuse your mind. I am a tongue looser. Oh, yeah, he a looser tongue. I wish that that's a new word I made up, and you, you, you can use it when you need it. Loose my tongue, Lord, to give you praise. Fix my eyes to take my eyes off of man or woman. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In John, as I was seeking his face, As the deer panteth for water, so my soul seeketh the Lord. I told you I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. I see myself. When, when you look in this mirror, you shouldn't see somebody down the road. You should see yourself when you get in this mirror. And so when I see myself, I see how wretched I, I really am. And so I want more of Jesus. Show me more. Give me more. And so in my time of worship and praise and, and prayer, I ask the Lord. Not only my children, but my siblings and, and my coworkers and my neighbor and my fellow church members. I asked him, I said, Lord, let them see Jesus in me. And just as clear as I heard him say, while on my sickbed, thou shalt live and not die. And you see me standing before you today with all that I have been through. I stand before you whole because of the grace and power of God. 
he said to my spirit, in my spirit, I heard him say, just as plain, I heard him say, let him see Jesus. Let him see Jesus. My response is, Lord, help me. Help me to let him see Jesus. So in John 12, this, what came to my mind was John, the 12th chapter, and it's the account of Jesus having a dialogue with his disciples because there were some people who came to see him. So if you would turn with me to John 12, and for time's sake, I'll just start at verse 20. That's St. John. Twelfth chapter, starting at verse twenty. Jesus replied, "No, no. Now some Greeks, King James, will say certain. Amen. Certain Greeks, but NIV here says now some Greeks." were among those who went up to worship at the festival. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and requested of him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Mm hmm? That's verse 21. Let me read it in the King James. The same came, come out the Greeks, therefore to Philip, which is of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus replied. You see what Jesus replied. Now, in this text, to keep it in context, if you back up, this dialogue starts because there were some folks, thank you for the honoring the word of God, there were some folks called Pharisees, who had rejected Jesus. The thing I like about God is I have noticed in scripture through my years of being in Christendom is that God always, always, always leaves his son with the witness. Always leaves somebody who would be seeking or worshiping Jesus. Can that be you this morning? Could that be you? Could Are you the one that God chose to lead here to worship Jesus? Or are there other nefarious purposes for being here? Verses 20 through 23, you're going to find what some call the hour. The hour. It was interesting to find that when you look at the word the hour, it's quoted many times and most times by Jesus. What Jesus has said, the hour has not come. Or he said to his mother, uh, my hour is not yet come. When she came and told him that, you know, 
Yeah, and then she says, do whatever he tells you to do. And then other times, the scripture just tell us that, 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 that uh, he was being attacked or he was, uh, it was alleged, he was being attacked, uh, but they was trying to throw him off a cliff. But the scripture tell us that they couldn't do it because of his hour had not yet come. Many times, many times you see it in the Bible where his hour. But here, now, we see by these Greeks, these Gentiles, coming to try and gain an interview with him, Jesus lets his disciples know, now is the hour. Now is my hour. That you see it right there in verse 23, he said, Jesus replied to them, the hour has come. Well, the son of man, is what he referred to himself. In the third person, he said, the son of man to be what? Glorified. It's time. That was my sign. That, that's, my, that's my last sign. Now it's time for me to go and do what I came here to do. He was on his way. You know he was on his way. To Jerusalem. You know that, right? Scripture said he set his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem. And when we worship, when we serve him, we ought to set our minds and our hearts to be committed to do and go wherever he tell us to go. Come H-E hockey sticks, H-E hockey sticks, two of them, a high water. I'm going to do what the Lord says you. So he set his face and, 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 and it was that time had arrived. The hour for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now when you get to verse 24, then you got to look at that real close because actually what Jesus was doing was predicting the cross. You see it? I assure you, unless a grain of wheat dies, Jesus is now preaching the cross. And it confused me, this dialogue between him and uh, Andrew and, and Philip and, 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 and the rest, of he said, if the dialogue was going on and it confused me because they came for, for one reason, to give him some information about some folks that was not a part of the, the nation, of folks who, who were strangers and, 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 and outcasts. And in some instances, they referred to them as dogs. But, but, but Jesus went a different direction. Isn't that so like Jesus? Mm -hmm. To go a different direction? Isn't that just like Jesus to get straight to the point? Nicodemus, thou know that thou art a great teacher from God. No man can do these things, Nicodemus. Jesus kind of cut him off. Nicodemus, you must be. Jesus gets straight to the point with you. We know that in this mouth and thou shalt Worship God, woman, the day is coming. Well, actually, he said the hour is coming. When you will not worship on this mountain or nowhere else, in essence, but you will worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus gets straight to the point with you. He says, I'm going to the cross. And then, of course, there's always a cost. Verse 25 and 26. There's a cost for you. There's a cost for me. So the Passover, the Passover, the Passover. Headed to the Passover. Interesting, uh, when this thing starts out, many things have happened. Why, in verse 19, the Pharisees said to one another, out of the NIV, you see, you've accomplished nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. 
Wouldn't that be something if we could say that today? If they could just, listen, even if Colleen, if you can't say it about Colleen, or if you can't say it about Bell County, or if it's not known in Texas, and it would be a great thing for the world if the whole United, right now we divided states, but the United States of America would go after Jesus. Just, just, just picture that real quickly. It don't stay there for long because every time I think to do good, evil always want to creep back in there and show me a doubt or a negative. You know, you know. They're not everybody that says, "Lord, Lord." Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if just greater peace, the the members and the participants and the occupants and and those who come at, at this place would 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 just go after Jesus. Pharisees recognized something about this man. They said they said they had been trying to get rid of him, but but they said, "Listen, we haven't done a thing towards him." Now the whole world, the whole known world, but people was coming from everywhere, including these Greeks. We don't know where these Greeks came from. We we know that they worship certain other deities, and and so they may have recognized the triune God of the Hebrews, but we do know that they was coming up there to worship. We know that much. Amen. And back in the, the Old Testament, it, it says not to deny strangers to worship God. Let them come. That's why they had an outer court in the temple for Gentiles. They couldn't go no further, but there was a place for them to come and worship God. And so the Pharisees realized that they was losing the battle against Jesus. But God had did a marvelous thing just prior to all of this. And it was so marvelous that when he came back and he came back to dinner and he came back to sit down, people was all on the outside wanting to see Lazarus sitting at dinner with Jesus. This, this was the miracle that put the, the nail in the coffin for Jesus. This was it. I wonder what, what nail was put in your coffin when God did a miracle for you. But this, this for, for them, it was by others, it caused them to believe on him because the scripture says many believe on him. They came to see Lazarus, the scripture tell us here in 12, but, but they say they also came to see Jesus. Let them see Jesus. They came to see Jesus. You know, folks ain't coming to church because they want to see what you got on. Or they want to hear your knowledge, your expertise, our expertise. No, 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 no. You don't know what folks are going through when they walk through them doors. But they know this one thing. They know that this is what we call church. Help me, Holy Ghost, because this is not on my paper. This, this, is what, this is what we call church. So when they come here, Brother Bell, they, they come in here looking for answers. They come in here looking for solutions. They come in here looking for, listen, listen, they're looking for relief. And then the rest of us who's sleeping right now, We ain't looking for Jesus. We looking to make sure everything run according to what we used to running with. If the Holy Ghost decided to do something differently in the service, I dare to say half of y'all to get up and walk out of here. Oh, y'all don't like me. I said if the Holy Ghost, not Magruder, but if the Holy Spirit decided to do something different, in the service, half of you wouldn't agree with it. But the whole world, the Pharisees said, because of Lazarus, because what God did in Lazarus. Really, we tell all the stories about Lazarus, but really, you know the, the big issue with the Lazarus story? 
was Jesus telling Martha, didn't I tell you that if you believe that you would see the glory of God, I am the resurrection. Thanks God, Jesus is still the resurrection. That's why we ought to give him praise because, because he rose one of these old days when he called your name. It's because he rose. Death, no matter how long you stay in the grave, would not prevent you from coming forth. Nothing is going to prevent you from coming forth if they burn your body and spread you to the four corners of the earth by the wind. When he step out in glory and call your name, all that stuff that you see on TV that happened, all that stuff got to come back and make a body again. Is anything too hard for God? So that's the background. But then it's interesting as I get ready to walk up. That uh, we need to let him see Jesus. Let us not be like Philip here. You know, it was interesting, I was saying a while ago, Philip mentioned a few times in the Bible, probably about three, and each time Philip, Philip's name is mentioned. He was bringing somebody to Jesus. Let me ask you a question this morning. How many folks have you brought to Jesus? Come on, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Stay here with me for a while. How many, how many, how many folks have you brought to Jesus? Who have you led? Who have you invited? Uh, who have you told about Jesus? How many times have you shared the good news of Jesus Christ? You want peace, that's where it's going to come from. You want joy, that's where it's going to come from. You want order, that's where it's going to come from. Take them to Jesus. They out of line. They acting up. Take them to Jesus in prayer. Sometimes you don't have to say a word to them. All you do is steal away in your closet and have a little talk. Somebody's been there. Did you have a little talk with Jesus last night? Did you have a little talk with Jesus this morning? Are you having a little talk with Jesus right now? Won't he make everything all right? I'm not saying God will take away your whatever. But what he will do, he'll make it where you can stand under it. In other words, David said, for thou art with me. In other words, to have God's presence and his protection and his power is greater than anything else that you can have. It supersedes your bank accounts. It supersedes your membership. It supersedes the letters that may be behind your name. It supersedes your prestigious status. Just have a little talk with Jesus. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. And uh, so Jesus replies. And and, 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 and before he replies, one more thing here about Philip is Philip had, he looked like he was confused because, and I can understand Philip being confused because 
Jesus at one point had told them not to go anywhere else but to the lost sheep of Israel. When he sent them out, he said, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go there. He said, just go to the lost sheep. So they was used to Jesus dealing with just Jews. That's who he came for. Can I get a witness? But God has always had in mind the Gentiles. Can I get a witness? God has always had in mind. I, I had it marked down here, but if, if over there in Romans, the first chapter, verse 16, well, let me, let me move up to verse 14. Uh, uh, Romans 1 and 14 says, I am obligated both to the Greeks, this is Paul, and barbarians. Both to the wise and the foolish. You see that? He says in verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jews. You see it? And also to the Greek. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another place, listen, it says because to, to, to the Jews, it became a stumbling block. Talking about the gospel. The preaching of the gospel to some folks is a stumbling block. To the Gentiles, foolishness. But God chose the preaching of the gospel to confound the wise. And as I've heard many preachers say, not foolish preaching, but the foolishness of preaching the gospel. God has always had Gentiles in mind. You can see Jesus dealing with Gentile folks in the New Testament. But here, unfortunately, as I walk further up, they don't get the interview they requested of Jesus. But we can let them see Jesus because Jesus in his answer in verse 24 and 25 talks about the cross. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces, listen, a large crop. A large crop to include all of us, to include Jews and Gentiles. Jesus said, I'm not going to grant them an interview right now, but the hour has now come where the Son of Man is going to give his life a ransom for many. He's going to redeem. I told you, I wish I could have talked about Ephesians, but it's not mine to do. He was going to redeem not only the Jews, but he was going to redeem the whole world. All those who would accept him, God knew who, who those and knows who those people are, including you here this morning. You've been redeemed. And I heard the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Yes, yes, God here, Jesus here, yes, introduces the cross. He said, y'all just give me a little while. I'm, I'm going to fix it where y'all can interview me. I'm going to fix it where you can see me. Now, the thing I like about in-depth study is that you learn some things. Even if you don't know Greek, if you just keep it in there, God will show you some things. It's not that these folks, as I close, listen, it's not that these folks just wanted to look at Jesus. There was many that came to just view him, uh, just see him in the physical because of the great miracle that he had done. No, they wanted more. They wanted not only an interview, they wanted to know him. They wanted to know who he was. And oh, if we would learn to know him, in him was life. And the light was the light of men. In him is all, does all things 
consist. Or oh, if I had time, I'd go down through that in him. Because it's in him. In him was life. They wanted to know him in a more personal way. They wanted to get to know this Jesus. The apostle Paul said it like this, to know him. He said, uh, everything else that I have learned, I count it as dumb for the excellency of the knowledge of him. See, that's why I was talking about the valley experiences. Sometimes we think we know God as children of God until we get in our valley experiences. Because our valley experiences will let us know not only who we are, but it'll let us know who other folks are. When you get into some trouble, when you get into your valley experiences, you'll find out quick who your real friends are. You'll find out quick, are they really with you? Do they want to be affiliated with you when, you when you're going through your hard times? But you learn something about yourself in your valley experiences. You can know God in a deeper meaning when you go through something. As I said last week, you'll learn to call on him more fervently when you need him right now. Again, as I said last week, Peter, do you need him? Lord, Peter cried out, save me. He was drowning. Didn't have time for a cute little prayer. Lord, save me. Something else a valid experience will do. The valid experience will teach you something about God. Whereas before, you didn't know him in this area. You didn't know what he could do. And listen, if you wasn't weak, if you didn't fall, how would you know what God could do for you? If you didn't have a problem for him to solve, how did you know that he's your strength in times of weakness? Y'all gonna pray with me a little while. Yeah, he allows these things to come so we'll know him. We'll take our eyes off things around us and stuff in us and put our eyes. The Hebrew says, looking unto Jesus, the beginner, the author and finisher of my faith in your faith. Can I get a witness? So yes, 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 Jesus responded and told them, I'm going to the cross. But there's a cost if you're going to follow Jesus. Verse 25, say the one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, verse 26, say, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am there, my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, Gentile, the Father will honor them. You got to hate your life. When you study that verse, there's two lives in there. The first life is really talking about your ego that you prior to salvation. He says, you got to hate that life. You shouldn't like that life no more anyway. It's supposed to be dead. Reckon you yourself to be dead unto sin and alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Dead! And then that second life, he's talking about, listen, when you've hated that life and you become, you come in the line with God's will for your life, selfless, humble, as I said on last week, humiliate, you know, you, 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 you're humble. You're following his will. You're following his direction. You're doing everything to seek his face and, and his will and, and not my opinion and, and live like you want to live and, and do what you want to do. But, but now you've committed yourself to the Lord and, and you're serious about your relationship with Jesus Christ and you're growing. Yes, I know Romans 7 is in there. We ought to always remember Romans 7 that this Christian life is a struggle until that day. It's a struggle. I know it is. But a Christian, a born-again person will keep on. Hello, somebody. Keeping on. Can I get a witness? A child of God 
may quit for a while, but they're not going to give up. A child of God may give up on something, but they're not going to give out. Can I get a witness? In other words, Jesus here, that word down there, what he says, serve. Listen, that word, that word is diaconus, like the same word for deacon. That's, 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 that's what it was when he said, serve. That's what we're supposed to be servants. One of the greatest things that we want to hear one day, and all of us want to hear this, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I can just like the deacon. It's the same word for deacon. Service to one another and to God. The two goes together. Vertical, horizontal. You can't have one without the other. As I go one minute over, listen. I have questions. In verse 19, he said the world. He said the world had gone after him. Let me ask you a question. Have you? In verse 21, he said we would see Jesus. Do you see him? Hmm? Do you see him in truth and according to scripture? Number three, do you hate your old life? Are you still following him? And number four, are you serving Christ? Not the church, not the pastor, not your cliques, not your organizations. I'm not saying you can't serve in those capacities, but my question to you is, are you serving Jesus and following him? It's possible. As I get ready to take this seat and give the invitation, one more thing I learned, the benediction that we so often use Jude 24. Are y'all familiar with Jude? You know, it only has one chapter. In Jude, some interesting construct of the sentences, of the sentence in verse 24. I'm told that in that verse 24, now unto him, this is how it's all possible. Now unto him, there it is again. Hmm? That is able. You hear that? To keep you. Yes, yes, y'all know it, don't you? And there's that conjunction, and it's connecting, it's connected, and to do what? Present you faultless before the presence of his glory with. Exceeding joy, in verse 25, saying to the only wise God, our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and ever. Then he says, amen. Now, unto him, I understand, normally is an adverb. That's what I found out, that, that, that normally, that's an adverb. Talking about now. But here, it is a pronoun. Now, Unto him, which is a pronoun, but it's objective. That, the pronoun, but it is subjective, or either vice versa. But you English teacher know that in the English language, you don't normally have both. It's either or, subjective or objective. Pronoun. And so I went a little further and found out that if you go to the Greek and look it up and see what it means, ain't none of that stuff even in there. 
In the Greek, it just simply says, and I close, him able. That's what it says. Him able. He's able this morning. Can I get a witness? It was him who saved us, him able. It was him that brought you, him able. You may be facing something this morning, but him able. You may be requesting something of him and ain't got it yet, but know that him able. You may be waiting a long time, but you know him able. As he walked down the Vista Odessa, or however you say that, up Calvary's hill, him able. Put him on the cross, crucified him, and buried, but him was able. God raised him from the dead. Didn't he do it? I say, didn't he do it? Jesus, that same Jesus, is alive this morning, and he's able. He's able to fix it. He's able to make it right. He's able to scour you. In other words, he, 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 he knows what we go. He can, he can be touched with the infirmity of our feelings. He knows if you're fearful. He knows if you're afraid. He knows if you're lonely. He knows if you're scared. He knows that you're wondering. He's able. Him able. Him able. To keep you ha, from falling. And him able, one of these old days, Brother Jones, to present you. I know you got some spots right now. I know it, I know it, I know it. You got some holes in your building. I know it, I got them too. But he's able to present you faultless. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm glad, I'm through, I'm through. I'm glad that he's able. Aren't you glad? Doors of the church is open. Him able. Him able. If he did it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Moses, he'll do it for you. Listen, if he did it for Ruth, he'll do it for you. If he did it for the 10 lepers, he'll do it for you. How do you know, preacher? Because him able. Will you trust him? If you have never seen him before for salvation, now's a good time. Now's a great time. To see him for the first time as Lord and Savior. Let him see Jesus. 168 in the A, 229 in the B. Say, but preacher, Jesus is no longer on earth. How can we see Jesus? Colossians 1, Christ in you the hope of glory. Let him see Jesus in you. Hallelujah, Lord. Let him see Jesus. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior Listen, listen. I can hear my Savior call me. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. I'll go with him through the garden. Yes, I will. I'll go with No matter how painful. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Where 
where he take leads. His seat. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Oh, bless your name, Lord. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him. Oh. Let's do that one more time. Where he leads. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads. Where he leads oh, yes, me, Lord. I will follow. Teach me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Where he leads. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me follow. Help me be. 